welcome to Prompt Circle, where we discuss everything AI. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to create your own main journey style bot for Slack. This app will allow you to input a text prompt through a Slack slash command and receive an image in response. It could be a fun tool for your team or friends to generate images together in a channel. Okay, so let's take a look at the app in action. First off, I'm going to use a slash command, create image. Now, once I use this slash command, I'm going to add a prompt. My prompt includes the instructions about the image I want to create. Now I'm going to get an image in response. So this is exactly what we're going to be building today. So what do we need to put this app together? First, we'll set up our Slack app. Then we'll set up Replicate, which will provide access to the image generation model we'll be using. Next, we'll implement a function that takes the prompt from the slash command and returns an image. Finally, we'll test it out to make sure everything is working as expected. All right, so we'll start by setting up our Slack app. To do this, you need to go to api.slack.com slash apps to get to your app page. Once you're in your app page, you have to create a new app. And then you want to select from scratch, give your app a name. In our case, we're going to be calling it Staple Diffusion App. Then you want to pick a workspace and then create app. Once that is done, we will need to go ahead and generate our OAuth tokens. To do this, we need to go to OAuth and permissions. We'll also need to add some scopes to our bot. In this case, we'll be needing only two scopes. We'll need the chat write scope because our bot is going to be sending messages. And we also need a command scope because we're going to be using slash commands. Once we're done with that, now we're going to generate a bot token. To generate a bot token, we'll need to reinstall our app to the workspace. Click on allow to allow access. Copy the bot user token that has been generated. We're going to be using it later. So we go to basic information and generate an app token to do this. We go down to app level tokens we'll click on generate token and scopes and this is because we're going to be using socket mode so for our app to operate in socket mode we need the app token so we'll give our app token a name then we'll add a scope connections right this allows us to open web sockets then we can generate an api key once again we want to copy this api key and keep it safe because we're going to be using it in the project now finally once we're done with that we can now go ahead and activate socket mode. To do that, we go to socket mode and toggle the enable socket mode button. So now we have socket mode enabled. Now we can go ahead and create our slash command. To do that, we go to slash commands. we click on create new command. We'll give our command a name. So we say slash create image. We'll provide a description. And finally, we'll provide a usage hint. So this could be something that indicates that we need a prompt here right after the slash command. Now, because our app is operating in socket mode, we don't need to provide a request URL. So we're good to go. All right, so let's talk about Replicate. Now, Replicate is a hosted service for AI models. They provide APIs to access their collection of image models. In addition to their pre-trained models, they also offer GPUs for fine tuning and training your own models. Among their collection, of models is the stable diffusion model as well as several fine-tuned models that you can use. The prompt hero slash open journey model is what we're going to be using in this tutorial. This model is trained to generate images in the style of mid-journey 
If you'd like to learn more about this model or try it out yourself, be sure to check out the link in the description. So to get started with Replicate, you will need a GitHub account. Once you've signed up and logged in, you can begin setting up Replicate. Now keep in mind, you will need to enter a credit card to use Replicate's API, as the model is billed by the time used by the GPU to generate the image. The pricing for Replicate's GPU service is listed in the website, so be sure to check it out before getting started. It's a reasonable price for cloud GPU usage, but it's always a good idea to be aware of the costs associated with any service you intend to use. With that said, let's get Replicate set up and start generating some images. All right, now, after you're done setting up billing, you can just go to your accounts section and generate an API token. That is all we're gonna be needing for our Slack bot. To set up your environment for your Slack bot app, follow these steps. First, create a new directory for the project, CD into the new directory, set up your environment variables for all the tokens that are required. So this includes your Slack app token, your Slack bot token, and your Replicate API token. Feel free to pause the video to complete these steps. Once you have your environment set up, you'll be ready to start building your Slack bot app. Now that we have our environment set up, we can install the two packages that we'll be using for this app, the Slack bot package, as well as Replicate. Slack Bolt is a package that provides SDK for interacting with the Slack API. It includes tools for creating and managing Slack apps, handling events and commands, and many more other actions. For Replicate, it's a package that gives us access to Replicate's collection of image models. It includes functions for interacting with the models and generating images using them. To install these packages, you can use pip install in the terminal. Once these packages are installed, we're ready to start building our Slackbot app. All right, so let's dive deeper into the code. Now, we'll start by looking at the imports at the top of the file. We have the OS library, which will provide us a way to access environment variables. This is where we store all of our tokens. We'll also have the Slackbot library, which is used to create Slack apps and the socket mode handler, which also allows us to run our app in socket mode. Finally, we have the Replicate library, which provides access to the image generation model we'll be using. Next, we initialize our Slack app with the bot token stored in the environment variable, and then we initialize the Replicate model and the version that we'll be using. To see this version, check out the API page of the model that you're going to be using. For our model, we're going to be using the Open Journey model from Prompt Hero. So we go to the API documentation and there we will see the model name as well as the version. So you can copy that version from the API page and we'll be using it in our initialization. The main function of our app is called create image and it's triggered by the slash create image slash command. This function takes three arguments, ACK, command and client. ACK is used to acknowledge the command request from Slack Command contains information about the command. This includes the text of the prompt as well as the channel ID where the prompt has been initiated from. Client is a Slack client which allows us to send messages and update the message thread as well. In the create image function, we start by acknowledging the command requests using the ACK function. Then we use string formatting to create a prompt with a mid journey style prefix. We use a chat post message method of the client object to post a message to the channel, indicating that the image is being generated. This method takes a few arguments, including the channel, which is specified in the command object, and the text of the message. Using our initialized replicate model version from earlier on, we use the predict function to actually make our image generation request. So it takes in two parameters, prompt, which captures our prompt, and number of inference steps, which we have set to 50. Now, once the image has been generated, we use the chat update method of the client to update the message in the channel with generated image and the original prompt. This method takes a few arguments. They include the channel, 
which is specified in the command object, the TS, which is the timestamp of the message to update, which we also get from the initial message object, which we had captured uh, from um, sending the message itself, and the blocks to include the updated message. The blocks argument is a list of dictionaries that define the different elements to include in the message, which include text blocks, image blocks, and others. With these methods, we can post a message to the channel and then update it with a generated image and prompt once it's available. This allows us to keep everyone in the channel informed about the progress of the image generation process. All right, now to run the app, we use python3bot.py and that will run our app. We should see our message that suggests that our boat app is running and now our app should be ready for testing. All right, now it's time to test our app out. Now to do this, we want to go into Slack and want to create a new channel. So I'm going to name this image generation space. So this is where we're going to be generating our images. So we'll go ahead and create this channel. And then we'll also have to proceed to inviting our app to this channel. So we go ahead, click on add apps and add our app. Once we're done with that, we can now start using our slash command inside the channel. So we'll go ahead and use the slash command, create image, we enter our prompt, and once we're done with that, we get our image generated. So you can see, what first and foremost, we got our generating image message, and then we've got an updated message that includes our generated image, along with some text indicating our prompt. All right, and that's it. With a few lines of code, we've built a Slack bot that generates images in the mid-journey style. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and now you're inspired to create your own Slack bot. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.